Hello there, friend and fellow maker. Welcome to the shop. You've got Bill today, and I've got a really fun project that came to us from our buddy, Jimmy DiResta. Him and his team are producing these really cool knives, very real knives, not a prop knife. This is totally metal and just scary sharp. Uh, and they sent out uh, a few of them to some of their friends to do something fun with potentially make a new handle, which is what I'm going to be doing, uh, just to show off the cool new product that they've got over on their store, which I think you can go get right now if you want to get one of these delightfully cool and scary looking knives. Uh, I've decided for my rendition of the Jimmy knife uh, that I would make a custom handle for it using all the technology at my disposal. So I designed up a cool new handle that will go over this metal handle and then I went and 3D modeled that using Fusion 360 to make my own little version there. And then I printed it out using the Form 2 3D printer. Uh, this file, if you've got one of these knives, I'll have the file available for free. You can go download it and print your own. Um, you can print it on a resin printer like this, or you can give it a shot on a normal FDM printer. Uh, I had a little bit of a mishap with mine and created a little spaghetti art here, uh, but it'll totally print on a normal FDM printer if it doesn't fall off the print bed like this one did. Uh, I'm going to take the one I printed on the Form 2. I'm gonna clean this up a little bit and get it ready for some next few steps that I think are gonna be really cool. Okay, I don't need that. First thing I wanna do is to remove the supports on this guy and I'm gonna use just some little nippers here to do it. Ooh, that'll sand out easily. My print looks really nice. The form did a pretty great job. I will have to sand it a little bit. Uh, I did have a little bit of a failure though. For some reason, these two little spots didn't, didn't fill in. So I'm gonna mix up some body filler and fill those in, do a little manual body work on that. Got some body filler and a little bit to mix it up there. Oop, that's probably way too much, it's all right. Ooh, I like the blue, that's very nice. Just get a little bit of stuff. You always wanna make sure you put in enough to totally fill it, but not so much that you end up sanding for days. It's this delicate balancing act. But one thing you don't wanna do is have to come back to fill more. That's always annoying to have to mix up another batch. I have clearly mixed up way more than I need. And I'm gonna fill it more than I need as well. Only a couple minutes later and our filler has started to kick. It's a little rubbery still, but it is solid now. I can go in with my X-Acto knife and cut some of the detail that I need, avoiding turning it into dust. I'll have to still do some sanding, but this gets rid of the bulk of the material without having to do a ton of sanding. I'm still leaving more than I think I need. I'll sand the last bit of it, but I do want carve a bunch of this away. There we go. This is like the first step towards kind of a sculpting. There we go. Get rid of that. Now that looks pretty good. I'll let it fully cure now and then we'll get to sanding. Something else I noticed here, my uh, handle is a little more snug than I want it to be. So I've got this uh, sanding stick and I'm going to use that to sand the inside. It does fit just so. Can use that to sand the inside of this to help make a little room. If I have to, I can sand the metal down a little bit as well. Now I 3D modeled this to fit. It should fit, uh, but it could be that the uh, resin shrunk a little bit and therefore doesn't fit quite perfectly. Oh yeah, nice. Oh, perfect fit. That looks really great. So the, the end product will be something like this. Uh, but I have some finishing work to do first. So let's take that off, get to sanding. Going at this with a 220 to start with. The uh, form, this resin is really nice to sand and it leaves such minimal layer lines. I'm really, I would normally go just 400, but I'm using the 220 to get rid of these uh, these protrusions from the from the supports. Oh, 
So our little, our little oopsies in the print have been filled in. Let me clean this up a little bit and then I'm gonna go over everything with this 400 grit and really smooth it out. I sanded this down to 400 grit and then I'm just going over it with a scouring pad here to kind of clean it up. Uh, and I think that's gonna be good enough for the next step, which will be mold making. Yes, I'm gonna make a mold of this handle, but it's gonna be a very special mold. I'm gonna mold it with the knife in there and have part of the knife included, right? And then once the mold is made, I will take this part off. I'll put this back in the mold to fill up the negative space with resin. So I'll replace the handle with fancy looking resin. That'll all make sense in, uh, in just a few minutes. Since I wanna make a mold of this, I need to add a pouring spout. That's where the resin's gonna get poured in. So this little hunk of two by four, two by four plywood is gonna get glued in to be our, our sprue. Once it gets cast and we have solid resin, this part will get chopped off, but we need a way to pour the resin in there. Let's uh, put a little accelerant on this surface there. There we go. I'm gonna go in with a little clay and just kind of fill in the gap around it there. This is a uh, non-sulfuric oil-based clay. It won't dry, it means I can remove it later. The non-sulfuric part of it is important because sulfur can have a bad reaction with silicone. So this is just a plastilina clay that I've used a million times on a million molds, and it does the trick. Just filling in these tiny little gaps so that when I pour my silicone in, it doesn't sneak in there. Silicone is very sneaky. Ah! Got a pretty large gap up here. I definitely want to fill that in. The 3D model is not perfect. I did model it quite quickly. But again, that's just to keep silicone from sneaking down in there. I'm, uh, I'm working on my mold box here. Part of the knife needs to sort of protrude from it, so I need to cut this blade-shaped opening on this one end here. And it's okay if it's a little, a little loose. I think I'm gonna hot glue it in place. This is so that our mold box will only cover the handle part of the knife. No need wasting silicone on the whole blade section. That should go just like that. And I'll build the box around it up here. That goes down to that line. We can put a little hot glue there and sort of tack it in place. Just trying to make sure everything ends up perpendicular. So our mold is nice and square. Not critical, but you know, I like to make pretty molds. I'm gonna fill the rest in with clay like I did the rest of my seams. I could just cover this whole thing in hot glue, but at some point I will have to take it apart. And uh, I just figured that hot glue would be a little bit trickier to pull apart than the, uh, the clay. Okay, let's get to gluing. I just have some cheap plastic here that I'm using to make my box at some point like five years ago, someone was throwing away all this plastic. I got my hands on it and I've been using it to make mold boxes ever since. Yeah. Closing it up for good. Never to be seen again. It's not true, hopefully, hopefully we'll see it tomorrow. <laughs> Did some math here on the dimensions of my box, the volume, 378 milliliters minus the 50 or so for the handle. Uh, and I know that because in the form printing software, it tells you how much resin you use. I use about 50 milliliters. So I need just over 300 milliliters. I'll probably mix a little extra of my silicone. I'm using Wolmax 30 here because it's what I have. And also it's a good all purpose silicone. I have Probably just enough left in this bucket here for this project. 46 grams of the catalyst. 38. 46 on the nose! Look at that. Let's bring everything into a fresh mixing cup here. Make sure it's all properly and thoroughly mixed together. Silicone has a tendency 
of sticking to the sides of your container and not getting mixed. Not in this shop, mister. Now we throw it in the degassing chamber to get rid of the bubbles. Soup's done. Yep. Now we pour. This will be a one part mold. I'm gonna have to cut the piece out of there, but that's okay. Saves me a day of curing time when it comes to making a two part mold. So that's why I'm doing it this way. I'm using this vise here to hold the knife upright. Seemed like the best way to do it. And it seems to be working. This is when you start to second guess whether or not you mix enough silicone. That's satisfying. Yeah. <laughs> okay, that's probably enough there. Try not to make a mess. And poop. Little little poop. But uh, I do want to make sure that's centered. Good thing I'm wearing gloves. There we go. Centered. I don't see anything leaking out. Just gotta let that cure overnight. It's overnight. Now it's done. <laughs> That's not true. Well, it is a new day. Our silicone is fully cured. It's time to take it out of the mold box that I made. Ooh, oh. So far, so good. Okay, to get that out, I am gonna have to cut it, but I have a fancy knife for that. It's just an X-Acto blade that I heated and then I bent in shape. You gotta heat it, otherwise it'll just snap. Uh, but I'm gonna cut a seam down the side. This funky blade will cut some registration into the mold so that when it gets pressed back together, it will uh, lock back all nice like. I'm cutting this all the way off. You have those fat, fancy mold separator. <gasps> I do, I do. Ha <laughs> ha. Oh, look at that. And then it locks and then I can go in and cut it. <laughs> I'm glad you remembered. I bought these things like six months ago and I haven't used them yet. The craftsman recommended them. That's right. Thanks, craftsman. How handy is that? I'm just cutting down to my model there. I woke up thinking about this today, you guys. I'm so excited. Oh, I hit, I hit the knife. Cool. Okay. Oop. There we go. That wants to come off, which is great. Now it should be connected in the back here, yeah. This part here needs to get cut so I can get it out. There we go. And that, that's our mold. Ta-da! <laughs> Okay, so we are done with our 3D print, although I did want to show you, I made an alternate version, I just printed that last night, that looks really cool. So if you want to print one at home and still show off the Durested logo, then you can totally do that. You know, or do it this way. For the next step, I want to fill in these letters with color before casting the entire handle. So, I'm gonna put a piece of tape on the back of it to keep resin from leaking out, hopefully. <laughs> Then I'll fill all these letters in with some urethane resin. I'm using Smoothcast 326 here, and I put some orange tint in it. Actually, this is the same orange that I use for my Blade Runner handles, and uh, it's been sitting around since I made that project, so I might as well use it up on something cool. I've got my eyedropper here. I'm just gonna fill it up with some resin and use that to fill up my letters. Oh, that is satisfying for that bubble. That looks pretty good. Just gonna make sure there aren't any bubbles. I'll throw this in the pressure pot to make sure that it uh, definitely doesn't have any bubbles in it. And let it cure. 
Okay. Carefully set it in there, make sure it looks like it's level. And bring it up to pressure. This will compress any remaining bubbles in there so that the liquid resin, when it cures, will be perfectly see-through. There we go. That'll do it. I gave my resin a couple hours to cure. Uh, I poured the extra into these molds here, and this big, thick chunk cured really fast, but this thin one took a bit longer, and I, I wanted to have that as an analog for the letters. It's just a very small volume of resin, so I can tell that it is fully cured, so I can now go into my pressure pot and expect to have fully cured resin. There we go. It is cured, which is great. Let's see how it looks with the tape removed. Ooh, Ooh that is neat. I have to clean that a little bit, but that looks pretty awesome. Just a little bit of extra resin here I gotta trim off. Clean this up, make it look all pretty. Just cleaning up the rest of what's left over there. Got the color in there, that orange in the letters, which is what I was going for. Now I need to make the rest of the handle, and that's why we made this mold. You see, this should fit right back in there. I can line these teeth up, all right? And that you can see this leaves a negative space around the handle, and we're gonna fill that with more resin. I'm gonna clamp this all together with some big old rubber bands. Be very careful not to poke myself with the end of that knife. And there we go, my new Jimmy Duresta knife handle. <laughs> Ergonomic, convenient, no, I'm, I'm just stacking this up on these blocks here so it'll stay upright and I'm making sure that the uh, handle is centered in there. It looks really good. So I think we're ready to pour some resin in. This is more of that 326, but it hasn't had any tint added to it. It should cure mostly clear, maybe a little bit of an amber or a yellow tint to it. But this is what I want my uh, handle to mostly look like with those orange letters in the middle of them. Now we fill it up and should be going all around that handle, encapsulating it. Okay, that's gonna go in the pressure pot. In it goes, and I'm probably just gonna let this cure overnight. It is the next day, everything is fully cured and it's time to demold it. I'm so excited. I've been looking forward to this, well, since yesterday. It's just like Christmas, like unwrapping a really awesome present that you've been looking forward to. Except that I, I already know what it is. I don't know if it worked, though. Ooh. Oh. <laughs> wow. Oh, that looks really cool. Let's see, there aren't any bubbles. I was worried there might be bubbles there. There aren't any. It looks like it's full. Oh, that looks so cool. Um, all right, there's still a couple more things to do. Let's, uh, <laughs> look at it. That's exactly what I wanted it to look like. Oh, that's satisfying. <laughs> Over at the bandsaw to remove the, uh, the sprue. It's gotta go. The last step is just gonna be to polish this up. I've got some uh, plastic polish here and a uh, buffing wheel for my rotary tool. And I put the guard back on here and taped it so I don't hurt myself. And we're just gonna shine it up a little bit. The last step, I think, needs a little loop of something on there, so I grab this uh, leather strapping that I have and tie a knot on the end of it. Grew up sailing, you'd think I could handle tying a knot. That's a really short, <laughs> that's good, there we go. That is gonna wrap it up, and I am in love with this thing. It looks so, so cool. Jimmy's selling these, like I said, we'll have a link down below, you can go uh, buy one of these yourself. Uh, I'll have 3D files available if you want to print a handle as well, both the cutout version and the solid version, if you want to give it a go yourself. And Jimmy's going to put together a compilation video of a bunch of the other makers who have put together their own handles, so you want to go make sure you subscribe to Jimmy's channel if you aren't already. 
Uh, that'll wrap it up for me in the shop. Thanks so much for watching and hanging out, and we'll see you in the next build.